So we've already looked at summer and autumn, which have been awesome, but we're going to be looking at winter today. Um, also, if you guys have got any questions at all for Ralph or Ben, do make sure to get involved in the Mixer chat and remember that giveaway as well. But should we, should we kind of get into some gameplay? Because mm. I know, I think that's what everyone always wants to see is like the, the, the changes and we can go into it. Um, so if we kick it off, uh, Ben, why don't you kind of get us started in like kind of the... The art, the, the art. Sure, sure. Okay, so we are starting off, as I said, in the same location as, as uh, last week. So we're in Glen Rannoch, which is a combination of those two, two Scottish locations that I mentioned last week. And as you can see, this is the north of the map, so we've got some real heavy, dense snowfall going on here. And that's, um, that's something that is uh, specific to, to different uh, areas of the map. So the more elevation you get in the world, you'll get uh, thicker snow. As you get a bit more south, you'll get like less snow but maybe more frost, more wet roads, that kind of thing. So there's every, everything makes sense in yeah. where, where the snow will be in the world. It does look beautiful as well. I think that's one of the biggest things is like all the little details. Because I, I want to kind of get into the water because I know one of the biggest features is that the lake mm. itself is frozen over. And I know there's been like a lot of questions of people going, is, is all the water in the game going to be frozen or is it just going to be the lake? How's it going to play Not out? Not at all. I, I think you'll see, you'll see tonight, it's kind of a mix. And like Ben says, it's all about really the altitude of the, of the particular area of the world, which determines whether the water um, is, uh, is frozen or mm -hmm. not. But it also, that, I think that really helps gameplay because it's, it's super fun to, to, to go drifting out on a, on a frozen lake. Um, but we also still want to have gameplay where you can splash through lakes, splash through rivers as well. Um, and uh, you really get all of that in the winter season. And I think eagle-eyed viewers will, will recognize this, as Ben said, from, from last week. Um, we're at this sort of Glenfinnan viaduct. This is, I think, I think we we're right up at the top of this mountain that we're, we're kind of at the foot of. Uh, Racing right that now. giant hovercraft. Um, we, with the, the hovercraft and, and the other stuff. Um, <laughs> um, uh, and, but it's just the perfect place to show how completely the world changes, uh, you know, from season to season, and particularly autumn to winter. Winter, you know, last week we had all those really sort of striking reds and oranges and yeah. uh, and browns, uh, and now you know the world is carpeted in white, um, and like this is what I'm talking about. I think this um, this completely different, really sort of stark aesthetic is just it's it's stunning to drive in, it's stunning to look at. Um, and it's, you know, it's why this is totally my, my favourite season. Yeah, I also think just one thing to touch on just before we kind of, kind of go into it even more is guys, do remember this is a developer version of the, of the game. So there could be bugs, there could be crashes as we found out last week. Like hopefully... <laughs> it has happened. Uh, it has happened a couple of times, but um, we'll just kind of be taking a look at everything. So Ben, I, this, I, I know right, you're going to hate me for asking this question again. <laughs> it's my normal thing, because one of the yeah. things, like looking through the world, okay, is one of the biggest changes from season to season that you can really see is the trees and how they've changed. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. so how's that um, working in the winter season? <laughs> so, so, Sorry. So as you can see, uh, they've, they've lost all their leaves. Uh, that's the thing that happens in winter. After you worked so uh, hard <laughs> after on the after leaves. We, after, we, after we spend so much time getting the leaves looking just right, we uh, strip them all off in winter. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's obviously a, it's a very different look. Uh, again, it sort of plays into what Ralph was saying. And also, I think, you know, we've heard quite a few people saying, what did you learn from the development on, on Blizzard Mountain? Yeah. And, um, you know, is, is winter just like the experience we had in Blizzard Mountain? It's totally not, right? It's a brand new uh, visual as well, I, I would say, in that um, obviously Australia has all those gum trees that keep their leaves all the time, they never drop them. So actually, there was something really satisfying for, for the art team this time to produce this kind of skeletal. Um, horizon that you get with all the trees and losing their leaves in winter. It's a, it's a look we've never had in a horizon game before, which is... And I was kind of, kind of naively at the start of this project. I thought that winter trees would be the easiest because you didn't have to do leaves. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Turns out, not, turns out <laughs> not, not, in the, not the case at all. No, Actually, no. performance-wise, much, much more yes, difficult. That, that's true. Yeah, that was a surprise to everybody on the art team. <laughs> um, but yes, it turns out the winter trees, there they are. They're even more difficult to do. They're a lot more difficult yeah, to yeah, 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 get all that yeah. snow on there, right? Um, there's one thing, because there is so much snow right, in winter, as we've seen. Is there going to be parts of the world that aren't covered in snow, or is it just kind of...? Totally, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think that's a really important uh, thing for us in not just winter and all the seasons, is making sure that you can do all of the things you want to do in a Ryzen game in that season. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's true of all the seasons. It was probably most challenging to make sure it was, it was true in winter. Um, you know, because obviously snow makes things harder, right? Yeah. You know, frost, ice makes the, it makes it more difficult to drive. What we really didn't want um, to happen uh, was that winter be this big difficulty spike within the game. Um, so we've done a bunch of things uh, to try and avoid that. 
Um, but one of them is to make sure that there are still, oh, as Andy just destroys a child's snowman, <laughs> like, like callously. Um, you know, one of the things is to make sure that there are loads of roads in the, in the world which actually aren't covered in snow that you can still take a hypercar out on yeah, and, yeah. And, and, you know, not, not have a, a terrible accident. Um, so, yeah, you've got that total range of, of gameplay, which means I think, you, you know, as you saw there, we were just driving in the frozen Derwent water. Um, there's probably a greater range of gameplay available in, in, in winter than almost there is in any other season. Yeah, so it still suits all those different driving styles that you want to kind of get involved in. Exactly. Uh, there's a few questions from the chat as well. Motorized RC has just asked, how do seasons change? Uh, so that's a good question. The seasons, um, the seasons change weekly for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so it depends on whether you're in the game at the time the season changes. Uh, or not, how, you, how you'll experience it. Um, if you are, and it is, it's entirely possible that I think most people won't be playing the game at exactly the moment the season changes, uh, because it will change at the same time for absolutely everyone, regardless of time zone. Um, but if you are, then the game will start counting down. It will be really clear saying that the season is going to change in you know, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, yeah. 1 minute. Um, and then when it does, as long as you're not doing anything, which is to say you're not in the middle of an event, for example, um, we're gonna, uh, we'll take you out of that, we'll show you a season transition cinematic, uh, and when the game uh, fades back up, you know, 20 seconds or so later, um, you will be in the next season. If you're not in the game when the season changes, um, as I say, it's more likely, um, when you return to the game, you boot it again, you return from suspend, yeah. um, the game will just say, hey, the season's changed, it'll play that, that, that transition cinematic, and, and you'll just start from where you're straight off. into it. Yeah. Um, so also one thing to just quickly look at as well is the last last week we took a look at the map uh, very briefly for uh, autumn. We did. Awesome. But we kind of have a quick look at the, the map for, for winter, uh, which is also we're going to show across all the social channels. So if you look at Twitter, Forza Motorsport, or Instagram at Forza Motorsport Official, you can see the full winter map because it has changed quite a lot. Yeah, um, if we're going to go into it now, I think. Quick just, look into. Yeah, very, very quick look. Um, and yeah, like you say, completely changed. So there is a different map screen for, for each of the four mm -hmm. seasons. Um, this is obviously the winter one, which has to you know, recognize that the lake is frozen and a lot of the other uh, water in the world is frozen as well. It brings in the seasonal championships for, for winter and obviously mm -hmm. removes the ones from, mm -hmm. uh, from autumn. Uh, and then every, everything that sort of comes in just for that specific season, you can see uh, on the map as well. But we'll well, uh, the, like, of it. As, as I said, everyone can go, go check that out on Twitter or Instagram if they kind of want to have a more detailed look at it. Uh, but we're going to say goodbye to you for a little bit. I know you're going to be joining us back in the stream uh, shortly. Uh, but we've still got so much to come up in the stream as well. So thank you very much to Ralph and Ben for joining us for the start of the stream. But there's a more detailed look at the returning Forza Fun feature. We've also got an exclusive developer deep dive into the amazing UI of Forza Horizon 4. We're also going to have some fun trying to smash all those deviously placed bonus boards, which a staple for Horizon games, but right now we're looking at car mastery. And Ralph isn't going anywhere because that uh, Ralph is actually staying here. Totally staying here. Right? Is exactly. I'm talking about car mastery, uh, but I, I think we're rejoined by Ben, who I think can tell us what is car mastery. Well, again, yeah. So car mastery. If I get straight into the menu to show you. Basically, this is our new way to um, earn skills and then spend those skill points on cars. So in Forza Horizon 2 and Forza Horizon 3, we have one kind of global set of um, perks that you could spend your skill points on. Yeah. And we got a lot of kind of good feedback from this. We really enjoyed using the system ourselves. It went down really well. One thing kind of we realized was that once you'd unlocked every perk, there wasn't really much else to do. You couldn't buy anything else. So we thought to ourselves, well, how do you, how do you beat having, you know, a grid of, of 25 or even three times that from Horizon 3? And we decided, uh, let's add a skill tree to every car. So. We're now looking at the Ford Raptor uh, F-150, and you can see that this is its car mastery tree. So starting in the bottom left here, we've got something that will give you um, some instant car collection influence. So mm -hmm. that'll actually go towards your campaign that we were talking about last week. So I'm gonna unlock that one. I'm gonna move through the menu a little bit. <coughs> Here's uh, something that will give you a bonus in event finish influence. So again, going towards campaign. Um, we've got some new ones, this is a big, Big favorite of mine, Extra Life. So now um, each skill chain takes two collisions to break. So that's, that's absolutely brilliant. So if you want to get those drift zones, especially Forts Fun yep. Live, which we had a look at, right, doing those perfectly for those kind of drift spaces, unlock that. And if you've got the mastery, it's going to help you out massively in getting those changed. How do you go about earning the points? 
So you earn the points by banking skills in the world. So the skill system is, as it kind of returns, anything cool that you do, you'll get that instant feedback. So drifting, wreckage, air, you start kind of earning those at the top of the screen and you chain them together and they will build and build into a bigger and bigger combo and then you bank all of those points and as they kind of um, increase, you then earn skill points to spend here. Right, so what, what are the kind of, what are the ones that we have within the uh, Ford Raptor space? So so you've got, you've got that extra life. Yeah, so this is all about cross-country racing, which is perfect. It's kind of what the car is built to do, really. So you've got there a, um, a kind of repeatable um, perk, which will give you uh, points for cross-country events. Yep. You've got wrecking ball, you've got air, all the kind of stuff that you'd expect when you're barreling down the side of a mountain, smashing bushes, jumping over the top of hills, stuff like that. Um, if we get into another car with a completely different tree, so let's get into something like, here we go. This, this, is a, this is the thing, what kind of justifies the kind of different skill trees that you're going to be getting with the cars? Is it kind of going to have, is every car, car type going to have specific like skills that you can unlock? Because I, I know it's going to range from like 5 to 25 skills, is it? Um, for yeah. each car, what kind of decides that? So there's, there's up to um, 16 kind of uh, perks within a mastery tree. Yep. And the, the cost of those perks ranges anything from like one simple kind of skill point all the way up to 25. Um, in terms of what you get within a car, it's really what the car is designed to do. So that Raptor we saw was all about cross-country racing and um, how you kind of boost those skills. This uh, Forza Edition Ford Capri with its like jacked up suspension, massive tires, which is perfect for dirt racing, you can see it's got Dirt Monster there, which is a perk which will benefit you in dirt racing events. And everything else is the kind of thing that you would expect um, in dirt racing. So again, we've got things like Drift, which is uh, something that rally cars are quite iconic for. You've got uh, Sideswipe, which is when you destroy something as you're drifting, um, as well as some really, really cool ones like um, this perk here means your skill multiplier builds twice as fast. So again, that goes back to the Forza Online stuff we were talking about. And then can last I, week. if you're doing that with a skill multiplier so it builds faster, is that a way of earning more points quickly? Yeah. Because because like that, that this because one of the big features that kind of I got really excited about, and like this is the thing, is that you can earn build the, the mastery of the car, but it sticks to that specific car. That's right. I think that's the best thing about this feature actually is um, you can earn masteries and complete this skill table for each like individual instance of a car. But if you get another Ford Capri Forza Edition, it will start with a blank skill tree, and then you can actually you know spend your skill points and build that one up uh, as well. And what's what's doubly great about it is that you can actually sell a completely mastered car on on the auction house, for example. Yep. Um, and and that could have real value, I think. Yeah. This is thing, right? This I can, I can already see what people are going to do because this is the first thing that popped into my head when I heard about this. Because you know everyone wants Edinburgh Castle, right? The most expensive player house. You can just like perfect a certain style of driving in a certain car and just become the ultimate like Veyron like like or, like McLaren Senna kind of dealer. Just like, all right, I'm going to be able to, I'm going to learn how to master this car every single time. They start flogging them off in the auction house. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people will come to you for their like completely mastered. Veyron on or, or Senna. And I, I think the other thing about this, you, you don't just, I think I'm right in saying, you don't just get to spend the skills you earn in that car on this car. If, if that's a very complicated yeah, right. way of saying it. But, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely right. All skill points are global. So if you've got a car that you're, like you absolutely love banking skill chains in, or it's a car that's particularly brilliant at that because all of its perks accelerate like earning points back, you get in this really nice kind of um, brilliant cycle where you get into a car like say um, a kind of Hunicorn car, of all of its uh, perks unlocked, you start earning loads of points, and then you get into new cars, and then you spend them, and then you're getting the benefits from those, and then you're back into the unicorn, earning more points, and it just kind of goes like that. It's, really, it's, it's really an cool. awesome feature for people to take advantage of. Also, guys, for those watching, remember if you if you've just tuned into the stream, we are doing a little giveaway as well for in-game cosmetic items. All you've got to be doing is get involved in the Mixer chat over on mixer.com forward slash uh, forward to motorsport, and you have a chance of winning that particular. Customer in-game customization item, uh, which you can then use once Forza Horizon 4 comes out. Just get involved, and you'll get a whisper. If you, so, you have a chance of winning one, which is really, really cool. Uh, we've also got a couple little questions that have come in. Uh, so, from Thunderbird, he says, "Will barn finds be affected by seasons?" Um, so that's a good question. I think that the, the biggest way in which they are affected is that there are some which are season specific. So there are there are certain uh, barn finds which will only appear in certain seasons. And we've talked about one previously, which is the really obvious example, the one that's on an island in the lake, which you can only get to when it's frozen in winter, for example. But actually, I think each season has a, a seasonal barn yeah. find, which is only available during that season. Yeah, yeah so uh, like, 
because I, I, I saw one that was on. Actually, can I, can I spoil the location roughly? Uh, I saw I saw one earlier. I just don't ever want to ruin it. Sure, yeah, yeah. Right on the, in the middle on the middle of the lake, there was like a little barn family. That's like literally the one I just mentioned. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I had a little mind blank. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it happens sometimes. I'm sorry. Uh, so there's 450 cars in the game. Yeah. 450 cars in the game, which you can kind of go. Do you reckon anyone's going to be able to master those? Like, how long do you reckon I it's going to take? So. I, I honestly don't. Someone think so. will. Someone somewhere will do it. Have you done the math on, on how many? No, and I don't even do it myself. I know. So, right. Someone will. Like how, we always say. Yeah. Yeah. How much time do you reckon it'll take? It's a, it's a long time. time. It's it's a a long time. It'll take a long time. Do you know I, what? Players, think, players always surprise us. There's always a bunch of things we say, oh, no one will ever be able to do that, and, and, and someone yeah. does it ridiculously fast. I hope someone does. Yeah. Send us a screenshot if they do. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, th I think we should kind of have a look at Fortsfun, because last week we obviously took a look at Fortsfun Live for the very first time, but that's not all there is to Fortsfun. So, Ben, could you kind of tell us everything else? There is to know. Yeah, let's go through it. So this is the main Forzathon screen. So last week we were looking at Forzathon Live, which is your kind of promise that every hour on the hour there'll be something cool to do, and that'll give you Forzathon points, which was kind of a new currency we touched on. Yeah. And we spoke about how you spend those in the Forzathon shop. Um, so beyond every hour, we wanted to make sure that players had something to do every day. So you now get daily challenges, and those are maybe the closest to Forza Horizon 3's Forzathon. So they're like bite-sized challenges that you can do. So you can see some there in the middle of the screen. You've got like, earn five ultimate air skills. We've actually already completed that one and got our points from it. Um, some awesome near miss skills or ultimate skill chains. They're like kind of quick things to do. Um, and they will come through. You'll get one daily challenge a day, but you don't have to absolutely complete it that day. We tend to, um, we allow you to keep kind of three in stock, yep. so to speak. So if you've been away for the weekend and you come back on Monday, you've still got, you know, the last couple of days worth, so you can quickly rattle those off. And they're kind of analogous, I guess, to if, if anyone's played Forza Horizon 3, which is the first game we had Forza thrown in, um, and are familiar with those challenges, they're kind of analogous to the challenges that we had in Forza Thorn in, in yeah. FH3, right? And that they are pretty easy to do you can knock them off like uh, almost without knowing it as we have um but there's certain, there's not a big time investment involved in, in doing them but there is this reward yeah yeah they're, they're really simple in fact we often find that when we're um when we're testing the game internally you'll be you'll be doing daily challenges without really thinking about it but it's like a nice reminder that fortathon's there and giving you rewards so beyond daily challenges we wanted to make sure that you've got something to do every week and so this is where the weekly challenge comes in place and the weekly challenge is all about getting into a, like a particular kind of special car, like maybe something like a Nissan GTR or a particular type of car. So here we've got the vintage racer type. Um, and this will give you more points than a daily, like many more points than a daily, but it'll take a lot more work to do, like half an hour, an hour's kind of play. Um, and there's usually four stages to do in a weekly challenge. So you can see here, the first one is like owning and driving a vintage racer. So let's, let's say that we've got that. We then go through and here is earning two particularly tricky skills to get during, um, during races. So there's like a really cool thing to do in that car and it's kind of leading you on a bit of a story. Yeah. Um, do all four and you get all of the Forza Thon points. So, so, like, so that's how I know kind of compared to a day challenge you can get a lot more points but it's a lot more work to put in to yeah. kind of do it but it will give you different experiences because you're going to have like the, uh, the Antiquid Roadshow one but what, so the following week what could you have a completely different challenge yeah, as well? Yeah, could be Classic Muscle, could be like the Nissan GTR, like I was saying, Bugatti Veyron. Um, using the Veyron as, as an example, you'll be doing things like, you know, driving above 250 miles an hour for five minutes non-stop and stuff like that. Like, challenges that are perfect for that type of car. And I'm right in saying that you have to do these in order, so you, yes. you go one, two, three, four, and it's kind of a, a little bit of a story, a little bit yeah, of a progression. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is a bit of a story. Yeah. Um, I see we've got Max British with uh, our... Uh, uh, challenge names here. Antiquated Roadshow. Yeah, it's yeah. Similar so, to, jolly uh, good show. Excellent. Yeah, yep. Excellent. Jolly good. <laughs> similar to television. Um, a Dickens of a job there as a uh, I, yeah. I saw that one also. <laughs> uh, before we kind of go through a bit more Fort stuff and Fort's form, we've just got a couple more questions from the chat. Because guys, remember, if you've got any questions about anything that we're discussing, whether it's winter or any of the new features, drop them in the mix chat and then Ben or Ralph could uh, answer them for you. Uh, but Oliver Watley has just asked, is there still the convoy feature in the game? Yes, there is. Yep. Yeah. There's still the convoy feature. However, convoy is now your way of um, grouping up with other players. And we've spoke and shown a lot of the really awesome kind of anti-grief stuff we've got, including Auto Ghost. So you know how you're driving around free roam and people can't ruin your game by crashing into you. Well, when you convoy with other people, um, 
collisions are back on because this is a way of you saying I'd like I'd like to have that experience with these people who I know. So it's like perfect for um, tandem drifting and things like that. Yeah, and uh, batteries has also just asked: Is there still an auction house? Which we don't. We, we just touched on a couple we just of things mentioned, ago. Yeah, yeah, there is still an auction house, absolutely. Yeah. Which people are going to be able to take advantage of, yeah, which indeed. is uh, especially with all those new features. But should we have a look at uh, the rest of the uh, Forts Fun section? Yeah. So we went through. There's something to do every hour, yep. every day, every week, and you've got your Forts Fun points. What can you spend them on? So here you go, Forts Fun shop, and you can see that there's a really nice collection of rare items in the game. And the way the Forts Fun shop works is. Every week when the season changes, its stock refreshes. Mm -hmm. um, you don't lose any of your Forts of Thumb points. You can save them up as long as you want and just wait for the perfect item in here that you want to get. And the way to think about this is that it's a way to um, guarantee getting a reward without any RNG completely ruining it for you every time you go through something like wheel spin. Like, yeah. I'm desperate for that particular Forts tradition. Like the Capri that I was in when I was going through the mastery stuff. You can see there that it's, um, it's in the shop and it's got a price and that gives you something to save up for so you can guarantee that that's what you're going to get instead of trying your luck with wheelspin. Also, is there ever going to be any like, exclusive items in the Forza Thon shop that you're not going to be able to get in the game uh, like, elsewhere? Elsewhere? I don't think so, no. Oh. No, we don't, I, we don't want to get anything in the, uh, any content in the game behind you know, a specific feature. Yeah. Um, we haven't you know, gated any behind this feature, um, so it'll all be stuff that you can get in different ways throughout the game. But, but like Ben says, it's the perfect sort of shop front to come to and, you know, and get that thing that you, just, you really want and just hasn't been landing for you in wheel spin. Can you use like, your like, in-game money or like, real money to kind of be able to kind of ex like, speed up the process of getting these like, kind of thoughts on points so you can like, kind of just, shortcut? Just for us on points, yeah. You can't use in-game cash. So no nothing else, which is awesome. But like, the thing is, is so if you take a look at all the items that you can get a hold of. Um, like, what kind of like, costings and everything like that? Is that all kind of till, still TBC? I think yeah. we're still working on that, yeah. Still filling it out a little bit. Um, I mean, you can see on the screen that a full tradition car costs more than, you know, a kind of, I say a normal car, it's still a <laughs> GTR R34, which is awesome. But um, we're still, yeah, working out the earn rates and costs. Yeah. That's awesome. But before we move on to the next section, Infamous Creations is us asked, are there rewards and perks for being a painter or tuner? Right, in for Forza Horizon 4. Yes. Um, I would refer um, them to last week's, the VOD of last week's show, actually, um, where, we, where we sort of dug into uh, the, the, the campaign mode, the Horizon Life. Um, now, by being a painter and, and, and a tuner, um, you can actually progress your, your campaign in a way that you've never been able to before. Um, so you, you will be able to, by, through being successful as a tuner or as a painter, um, you'll be able to earn influence, you'll be able to, uh, to level up and progress towards you know, being a Horizon superstar, which is the goal of the game. Um, and I think that's really cool because we know lots of people spend you know, a lot of their, their time in, in the paint shop. This is a way now for them you know, to see real fruits of that within the game's progression. Yeah. Right, so anyway, thank you very much for talking to us through Forza Thrawn. We've got so much more stuff coming up on the show. Big thank you to Ralph and Ben for chatting us through. Ralph will be returning in a little bit. Uh, ben, I think, I think, I think you're, you're finished with us for today. Yeah, yep. so, like, <laughs> you know, uh, But Thank you very much for talking us through everything. Uh, once again, guys, remember all the information. You can go back and watch the VODs if you want to kind of catch up or check back on any, other of, the, any of the information that comes up on these streams. But we've still got so much more to come through on the stream. Stream. So we're going to be finding and smashing some of the tricky to find bonus boards. So stay tuned for tips on where they are in the game. And also, if you've just joined us, where have you been? Because you've missed a tour around the map in winter. More info on Forts Fun. But don't worry, check back the VOD after the stream so you don't miss anything. Now, since we started these live streams, something I keep seeing in the comments is how blown away people are with the UI and presentation in this game. And presentation is always amazing in Horizon games, but this game has been taken to a new level. So I've been joined by Matt and Rich from the team to kind of talk us through all the UI features, which I'm really excited about kind of seeing more of and hearing about. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so Matt, first of all, You've worked on Forza since the very beginning. So oh, well, yeah, I think it's been eight years now. So yeah, um, it's been it's been quite a whirlwind. But watching watching the studio just thrive alongside with this series, it's just been it's just been great. It's a real privilege. Yeah. It must be it must be really exciting to see how far it's come as well. Yeah, it's like. just crazy. I'm really really proud of the team. They've done a great job this time. Man. Also, favourite season. I I've, I always ask this <sighs> everyone. Uh, probably autumn, but autumn in the kind of golden hour kind of stuff. I really like doing the photography kind of stuff, so when that light just gets really low and you're getting the, the falling leaves and stuff like that, it's, it's 
don't don't talk to ben, don't talk to Ben about the leaves. He's, he he <laughs> goes goes on about for hours. Uh, Rich, as well, you're the lead UI artist, yep. right? How has it been kind of working with the team and like kind of getting this all put together? Yeah, yeah it's been great. Uh, I'm lucky enough to like work with a, a fantastically talented team. So. Uh, like our job is to mainly focus around like um, the presentation of the game. So we're looking at like menu systems, um, the hood, um, and dealing with like things like motion graphics. So uh, yeah, so it's really uh, really cool stuff. Yeah, so I, I think one of the biggest places to start would be kind of where you kind of draw the inspiration for the UI because it's like so slick and cool to look at. Like what kind of like kind of do you do to kind of bring it all together? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, do you mind if I uh, steal the still controller? The, still the controller. Sorry. Yeah, so if we, if we dive into the pause menu, so, so for us, um, given that Horizon 4 is kind of set in a modern day setting, it only kind of makes sense for us to, when we're gathering reference at the beginning of the project, to uh, lend, lend to that and gather modern day, like cutting edge graphic design yeah. references. So, you know, motion graphics, like advertising, uh, things like that. Those sorts of stuff is really useful for us. Um, and what we tend to do is kind of gather that, gather that information and, and, and wrap it around what we like to call our core pillars um, and we can kind of um, communicate those as words which we have scattered around the office yeah. so we have things like fun freedom and beauty um, so what we then do is kind of distill our reference and focus them around these pillars mm -hmm. so for things like fun and, and beauty um, we've really like pushed through things like the vibrancy that you're that you've seen in the UI now um, the playful nature I think in comparison to, to what we've had before um, is really like coming through um, and for things sort of like freedom, um, again, if you compare what we've had previously to now, our menus are a lot more flexible, yeah. um, which, which is great because it allows us to be a lot more creative with um, how we, how we like show things um, and also surface game features a lot more uh, successfully. Yeah, because like, because there's so many little aspects to kind of piecing the whole UI together. You must have some favorites, like favorite components yeah. and parts. Yeah, I've got a few favorites. Um, so I'd say. There's a couple of big wins for me personally. So, like looking on the home tab now, like we have a radio tile, which is great. So, even though it's off right now, <laughs> unfortunately, everyone's like, um, turn it on, just like you know, turn it on. So, usually that would show showcase like um, album art. Yeah. Um, but I think having a radio tile in the pause menu now is great. It's a an awesome way of kind of linking the UI to the festival. Even though you're in this like you know standalone space, there's still that kind of visual connection going on. Yeah. Um, as well as that, we've got the weather tile, uh, and actually, like, uh, showcases what, weather, I, I, I was what, about what temperature we have in the game right now. Yeah, because that, that's going to affect how, how the gameplay plays and feels. Yeah, it? absolutely. It's like it's a really useful like tool, um, but also I think it kind of like brings a bit of authenticity to the UI, which we haven't had before. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, pretty pleased with it. Um, but yeah, they're they're kind of like small like wins for us. But yeah. I think one of the biggest things that I'm proud of, and I think a lot of people. Um, in the studio, I'm proud of is what we've deemed our white space. And I know, I know this is what Matt is kind of like really happy about because you've kind of you've put a lot of work into this. Kind of, can you talk us a little bit more about the white space? Yeah, it's been a lot of work. You can kind of see it there in in the background. Um, but to speak about the series in general, the Horizon series has really had quite um, a unique visual identity. I think, and that goes right the way back to the beginning when we had um, this desire to really sort of push um, a youthful and energetic um, feel into all of our, into all, everything we did and that, that, that went through to the cinematics and, yeah. as, and as we've worked through um, all the games we've, we've tried to iterate that a little bit with the cinematics um, but then coming off the back of um, Horizon 3, um, Rich I remember me and you talking quite a lot about wanting to just push it a little bit further and see if we might be able to sort of fuse um, the UI and, and the yeah. cinematics together as, 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 as a, like a, a cool thing. Um, so we went away and we started like pulling up together a bunch of different ideas. Um, we put that in front of the team. I think that really started to resonate. So then from there, it just started to, um, to cascade into to a bunch of other features. Um, so what we can show you in a minute when we get into a race is is kind of uh, the white space. The white space. Yeah. It, it's, it's quite exciting because uh, <laughs> we've we've seen it a few times throughout all the races that we've yeah. gone into over the past couple of weeks. Um, I love I love it when you go into a showcase event. Yeah, that, uh, that's really cool. I mean, so. There's a couple of reasons why we've kind of gone for this um, white space idea. So, firstly, it, it just looks cool. Um, it, it's it's really different to what we've done previously. But 
um, one of the things we really wanted to do this time is be able to control um, the lighting conditions and things um, when, when going into events or looking at the characters. Um, and it's quite difficult to do that when you, when you pull up to a race in the middle of a dark field yeah. in the middle of winter. So it's nice to be able to just take that um, and control all this stuff and do some, do some cool stuff to look at while we're waiting for everything to, to fall into place and load. So, so that was just a quick, quick snippet of like, um, the, the pre-race. Um, and then if Andy can get around this race, <laughs> Fast, Freeze, we can probably show those eagle eyed amongst you will purchase our get ready og um, <laughs> <laughs> video. Um, not so that's, to talk about that. Yeah, that's that's not difficult. Do you reckon uh, Andy's going to crash here? Because there's, there's, there's been a thing, he's had a lot of pressure on him the past couple of weeks. Uh, everyone's like, I think everyone kind of like, uh, like eggs him on a little bit and kind of slightly hopes he crashes. But yeah. do, do, you, how, do you reckon he's going to get around here in like quick time or do you reckon he's going to like kind of crash? What does everyone in the chat think as well? Like, let, just let us know. Do you think Andy's going to do this flawlessly and win the race, right? Because then we can kind of get that nice cinematic at the end, <laughs> right? Or is he going to uh, going to crash? He never fails, does he? Really? Don't, don't tell him that, right? I We're mean, trying to. Is he the best racer in the office? <sighs> he may be, but you know, we don't like to tell him to his face. <laughs> Because what, what other bits have we got in the UI, UI that you've kind of worked on with this section before we get to the white space? Oh, we're literally about to jump to it, but... Hmm? Oh, we're about to finish. Oh, about yeah, to finish. Let's see if it works. Right, here we go. He's drifted. So one of the All cool right. things about this as well, with, with the finishing line, is that we know players like to spin and win across the line, so that's something we absolutely wanted to keep for that as well. So there was a lot of work that went into making sure that that looked all cool. And, it worked and it paid off, so it's really cool. Now it looks awesome. I can't like I can't wait for people to kind of get involved and kind of um, like look at it and for themselves, especially with like all the thoughts from like all the all the uh, major showcase events. There's so many cool little details. Uh, but big thank you so much for kind of like talking us through no all the UI features. Remember, guys, if you've got questions, drop them in the mixer chat because we've still got so much. But big thank you to Rich and Matt for talking us through the UI. Thank you for doing it. But we've still got so much more to come up during the stream, guys. So make sure to stick around. One little thing as well. We do have that giveaway, so if we can kind of flash the image again up on screen for you, because if you're on mixer.com forward slash sports and motorsport, you have a chance of winning this in-game cosmetic item. You might get whispered a code in the chat, so just get involved, ask questions. Uh, but this is everything else we've got coming up in the stream. Uh, so for those of you that are wondering, so much more, we have got bonus boards. Okay, now this is gonna be a really fun section. It's gonna have pressure, it's gonna have drama, and we're gonna smash some boards up. And we're once again joined by Ralph and Ben for smashing up some boards, all right? Last, last week we kind of drove through some mud, right? And we kind of, we, we, drove, we, we went through that, that mud, but this time, gonna be taking a look about bonus boards. So can we, can we talk a little bit about the bonus boards? Let's, in let's. Um... Because it, it feels like almost like a really tiny feature of Horizon Games to, to, to spend any time talking about, but I kind of feel like it's, it's been in every one of the Horizon Games uh, to date. Yeah. Um, it started in the very first Horizon game when I think, in all honesty, we needed some like quite cheap gameplay to mm -hmm. you know to put around the open world, and we, we thought, what could we hide around the open world that uh, the players could go find? But I think since then, we've just got better at it. Um, we've you know, found the fun in it. We've found the, the different types of gameplay that can be involved in finding and smashing um, a, a bonus board, of which there are, you know, there are usually about 150 in the, in the game. Um, and I think certainly on Forza Horizon 3, and I think this is, you know, thanks to um, one of our designers, Matt, Matt Piper, a big shout out to, out to him, who really sort of raised it kind of to an art form, hiding <coughs> bonus boards in devious yeah. places around the world. And I had a ton of fun, uh, you know, playing the game at home once we launched on Horizon 3, um, spotting them, figuring out how he wanted me to go and, you know, go about, like, you know, smashing it. Um, and he's done the same on this game. And that, that's, that's kind of what we're going to be looking at just over the next few um, uh, moments uh, in, in game, just to pick out a couple of uh, um, the, the most deviously hidden uh, bonus boards, and we're going to be seeing if Andy has got uh, the driving got, skills. Got the skills. I, I, I almost feel that we should get a poll going on the chat if it's possible as well. It feels hardly worth so, it. What? <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I love <laughs> polls. <laughs> it's good <laughs> fun. Like, mix of polls are great. You do love a right. poll. You know, so there are the. Uh, I think we're going to the first one. All right. Do you reckon he's going to do it first try? Right. So just to be just to be clear, it's up in that top pipe there. Um, he's having a look. 
can you draw um, them up to it? it up. And this is kind of this is kind of what I mean. Like, and, and there's a ton of these boards, right, which are just by the side of the road. I don't mean to say that all 150 are like. Uh, um, like sort of Nintendo style puzzles. Um, <laughs> but you know, there's there's a bunch of them which have got like some real sort of problem solving or skill based gameplay uh, around them. This is definitely, I think, a little bit of both. You know, it's a little bit of problem solving and now uh, it's all about whether Andy's got the skill. I, th um, I like, the thing is, right, we've, we've seen him practicing a little bit earlier. Oh, quite right, a lot. Was, yeah, uh, being, yeah, yeah. being saying a little bit, it's being generous. Here we go, is he going to do it? No. There's, there's, there's too much of that. Feels really familiar. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like he's hitting the floor again. It's, it's, we haven't seen this once at all. No. Um, but I think I think that's the thing that I love so much about this because it reminds me of the um, the event that we actually saw at E3, where uh, during the showcase you have to kind of thread the needle that's right, through yeah, the yeah, thing. It's, yeah. It feels like it's a more extreme version of that. You have to do it in midair, yeah. You got to kind of like, yeah. no, it's, it's, no, hold on, hold on. Oh. No, it's just too short. It's close. It was close. Um, right, how many attempts will it take? Okay, like twenty-eight percent of wait, hold on, what was it? Forty-one percent of people say it's going to take you more than three. So I like right. how three plus. Is three, plus. three plus. <laughs> three plus. We're sitting, we're sitting here at like ten p.m. I, right. I think that's yeah, that's a wise place to it put is your three money. Plus. Yeah, yeah. Just put you put your feet up and kind of like do it. <laughs> But it's, it's true, I don't, it was like you were saying, how well these are hidden around in yeah. the world. And is he going, oh. no, right, that, that was close, that was close. Because um, I was just kind of having a little drive about earlier and I found one on top of the viaduct. Yes. And then you, yeah, and yeah, then you yeah, just kind of see this little board. Oh! Right. oh. <laughs> Here's the thing, you'll find yourself doing the rewind, like there's, trying to perfect it. There's one um, which I've been, I found is quite early in the game. Um, and it's in the back garden of this little house um, uh, in, in Broadway, which is in the in, like, sort of south of the map. And it's this beautifully kept um, back garden. And it's, there's a children's football goal. <laughs> and it's in the football goal. And you basically have to ruin this family's garden in order to. Oh, oh there we go. Right, we got the first one. We got the first one. Round of applause. He's got right right now. You don't. You can't see it, but he has got the biggest grin on his face. He's like, I've done it. <laughs> you said it would take me loads of attempts. I'm here till 10 p.m. I've done it. Can't say anything now. Uh, and now we've got another board for him to try and smash. So uh, we're gonna be here until 10 o'clock. Yeah, I think we're gonna go and do a slightly different one. Is that is that where you're going? You you want it? Oh, you're feeling emboldened. Oh, he's he's oh. feeling confident now. <laughs> This is like one of the hardest ones I've seen so far because there's so many. Like, it's in fairness, he didn't get close to this. this I mean, and, uh, it would be fair to say Andy was nearly in tears trying <laughs> to do this. Anyway. I just love seeing like all the different effects and like kind of how the snow. Oh, so it, yeah, it just occurred to me. This is the first time I think we're showing night, night? in one yeah, of these yeah. streams, which is cool. Um, yeah, so there's I, there's actually some really cool stuff that we're doing in night, which we've never done before, which is worth talking about. So you'll, you'll notice if uh, people people are watching closely that we've got proper shadow casting uh, lights now from the car, which is a really cool new feature. It creates a, a sort of another dimension. You get all this mm. form that you never used to to get before. Uh, but also all of the, the environment stuff is is doing the same same stuff as well. So. Um, it's a really cool new piece of tech. It looks particularly fancy when you're in a race with lots of other cars and they're all casting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks great in Edinburgh as well, which we will be showing next week. Next week we will be showing uh, Edinburgh for, for everybody who's hanging out waiting for, uh, for that tonight. Right, but guys, remember, we are looking at winter. So if you've got any questions for winter, get them in the chat right now, because we've got loads coming up right now. Uh, Square Jacob has just asked, are there blizzards like in Forza Horizon 3? There is some pretty extreme snowy weather, uh, so we're, yeah, but we're, we're stopping short but, of calling them blizzards. But I think I think we're stopping short of calling them blizzards. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> okay. fair. Um, blizzard like extreme, weather. There's extreme. There's blizzard like weather. Yeah. That's <laughs> a, I mean, yeah, so, so if, you're, if you're British, you would probably refer to it as a blizzard, but you know, we, we do tend to exaggerate these things. That's, that is true. That is that is a thing. Um, but yeah, it, well, the weather can really does descend and the, the fogging and everything will get really thick and you'll see yeah. lots of um, snow particles. I, and I know what you're saying, I, like, I, oh, oh, Close. yeah, we've been here, haven't we? <laughs> uh, Deja vu. I know what you're saying, it doesn't, I don't think it gets as, oh, <laughs> as extreme as it did in Blizzard Mountain. Yeah. And, but, the, you know, the point of Blizzard Mountain was really, like, to, you know, to turn that up to 11 because that was the experience, like, being on a mountain in a blizzard was kind of, like, you know, the, the point behind that, that expansion. Miles oh, away. I knew he was going to do it then. Miles away. Um, so the book <laughs> 92 said, "What do super wheel spins do?" What do super wheel spins? Well, they're like they're like wheel spins, but super. Uh, but super basically. <laughs> there are three reels rather 
There. Oh, 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 oh I thought it was going to clip. Pretty close. Um, there are three wheels rather than one. Um, and I think I'm right in saying, and I'm kind of looking at Ben now uh, across the monitor. I think there's <laughs> there's like a, a more rare or legendary, sort of more rare or legendary stuff goes into super wheel spins. So you get three things that stop, you win all of them, and you can win um, some of the best prizes in the game. And it, it is. It is super awesome, actually, when 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 they they all land and if you get you know three good things, um, it's pretty cool. It's cool. So like, I kind of knowing my luck, I'm just going to have the worst wheel spin luck ever. Oh, it, 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 always, it always happens. I've always got my fingers crossed, and then then I'll promising. fluke something. Hold on. Oh, Whoa! I can't. Can, can, right, you've been trying this all afternoon, right? Can we get? Ben and Ralph doing a little mini head-to-head. -head. Oh, no. oh, that's right. right. <laughs> Can we get Ben and Ralph doing a little head-to-head -head on this one, right? Because Andy's been going at this all afternoon, okay? And he, he has struggled with it. it is, he's come close many a time, okay. right? But I feel like we should do like one go, like I think one go each between you guys and rotate and see who can do it this first. Penalty shootout. No. Right, penalty shootout style. And let's get a poll in chat. Who do you think is going to win? Ralph? Or Ben, who is going to smash the bonus board? Wow. So I, I feel like if you do this first time, you're going to be coloured. Oh, oh dear. Hold on. Oh, right. You know that was in line. You didn't I was alright. You was, didn't have the speed. Oh, sorry. I should have. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, yeah. But while Ben and Ralph are doing this, we can still ask questions. So get him involved in the mixer chat. Get ask any question you've got for Winter in, in Forza Horizon 4. Anything totally to do with the away, game. Though. Go ahead and answer them. And remember, if you're getting involved on mixer.com forward slash Forza Motorsport, oh, God, you have God, a God, chance God, God, of no. winning a in-game cosmetic <laughs> item which could be whispered to you um, as Ben goes it's, flying it's, miles away. So it's over there? It's over there, yeah. 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 Got yeah. It, got you it. need to go left, like, uh, a lot more. No, it looks it's really sweet. easy. Like you see it, it's just all you got to do is go down a tube and just turn left. So there is a re... Oh no. Oh, oh, no. So... Yeah. There is a rewind, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> oh, um, also, Ben, all right, I'm just saying, I didn't do this, right? But someone has... The, the poll has put you as tree. Oh, oh fantastic. Right. fantastic. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't me. Yeah. But I'd just like to point out, for those of you but wondering... But you are winning. Right. So, so shout out to the guy who was selling uh, printer cartridges who sent me an email <laughs> and actually... Um, Referred to me as Tree in the email. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy any? Hi, Tree. Did uh, you? I haven't bought any yet, but um, uh, I, you know, I definitely will at some point. At some point, yeah. yeah some get, point. get those just just for the Tree point. Well, but yeah, like... Tree, you you've got fifty three percent of the vote so far. So guys, if you haven't already voted, who do you think is going to win, Ralph or Tree? All right. Oh, it's looking good. That is good. That's good. It's good. It's good. Oh. No. Oh. That's heartbreak. Yeah, you needed like two more miles an hour. It's <laughs> going. Um, so we've got another question from PTG. Uh, PTG Dan says, can you force a season chain via a blueprint? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, you can choose when you blueprint uh, uh, an event, you can choose any of the seasons. All right, so there we go. And also, it's Fizz says, is there still animals in winter? Yes, there absolutely is, and they carve tracks in the snow just as the cars do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you chase the sheep. How are the sheep? What's the sheep's volume like? The well, sheep's volume. It's quite, yeah. It's quite volume. It's, the volume is at its highest. Yeah. That is highest. You don't, right. you, do, you don't want those guys to get cold. Ralph, right. well, you, do you want to know you do? You, like... you don't want to hit the first right. bit. <laughs> so I'm just... What you need to do is go through. Uh, through the, I mean, I've just realised we've been at this for right. so long, the sun is coming back. Yeah, yeah. It's when it sets again. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh. No. Uh, right, okay, I'm giving this back to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> they can't ha like. Can I can I have one go to just go through the thing? Because I've looked at this all day, right? And I am determined that this cannot be that difficult, right? This is you know that moment Famous it can backfire, last words. right? Um, okay. Or will we be able to change seasons uh, in private free roam? Free roam. Uh, no, you won't. No, you won't. So, um, up, except for using um, the blueprint system, uh, you you will be on the, the sort of server controlled, or if you're offline, the system clock uh, version, so that everybody experiences them at the same time. All right, sweet. And um, are you guys ready for the uh, single single attempt? Right. I mean, and that, there is, that is pitiful. Right, we, 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 we're doing a we're doing it with a barrel spin. Come on, please. Okay, no, I didn't have a spin. <laughs> right, guys, there's a rewind feature for a reason. I'm going to do one more and then pass it back to Andy, right? Because you know we've got we've got questions to answer, and I just need a bit more speed. 
I'm not. I don't come up with excuses, by the way. Is, no, no, is, that's I've noticed. Hmm? It's, it's the occasional <laughs> thing. But what other features are there in winter? So we've seen the snow. We've seen like the frozen lakes. Oh that, mm, it's a it's a little yeah. tricky. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm thinking yeah. about the thread and needle mode. So I, I I got riddled at E3. So with the one on the showcase which had the bikes mm. in it. Um, I went in and practiced before our live stream, which Ben was involved in a lot. Uh, and I um oh oh that's it. Oh. I mean, that's I'm cool. sorry. I'm, I, I went for style points as I passed to Andy. Right? You know, I didn't want to smash the board. I wanted Andy to do it. Um, so, should we kind of have a look at a race? Because we've, yes. we've, we've looked at some of the Let's bonus boards. Should we go have a look at a race and see how that kind of changes in winter um, compared to the other seasons? Of the yes. yes. And also remember, guys, if you want to go check out the other seasons, um, the bods are available that you can go watch and go check it out, so you can see what the game looks like in summer and autumn. And next week, we are going to be looking at spring on Tuesday as well. And um, Andy is finding it hard to move away from the board. He's the same, same thing. He's like, I want to smash the board as we go to a race. Uh, but also, we've got some um, more uh, questions coming in. So guys, get him, get him in the mixer chat as we kind of head on. We looked at mud last week, mm. okay? And this, I think we we buy actually the four by four place. We, we are in it, yeah. Mud, like how much does it change? Because it seems a lot more crunchy. <laughs> it does. You know what I mean, though. Yeah. So, so yeah. So this is, um, uh, I, I guess, winter's version of deformable mud, like deformable snow, which I, you know we sort of first uh, we first had in the Blizzard Mountain expansion, um, and. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of different uh, depths to the deformable snow that you'll find in the game. Um, as Ben said earlier, also, you know, it's not just all snow. There's also some areas in the south which are just frosty. Uh, there's roads which are cleared and roads which are not. And roads which are kind of like, you know, uh, I, I guess British people will uh, um, recognise this kind of uh, this kind of road from uh, from when it does snow, as it did earlier this year. Beast um, from the east. The beast from the east. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did, um, did you kind of was that kind of like as a game developer, like the dream moment to happen, especially when you're working Forza Horizon Four? You knew you were having winter in there. Was that just like kind of like a gift where you're like? If you're working on a game it? based in the UK with winter in it, then yes, yeah, there was a... Yeah. I mean, it's fair, it's fair to say that, I mean, every season has kind of been the perfect season yes. this, <laughs> yeah. this, this uh, past couple of years. So yeah, it's been, it was awesome. And we, you know, we absolutely went out and didn't just have fun building snowmen. We went out and got... Is that the snowman that we, we knocked over earlier? Was that yours? Uh, was that your <laughs> snowman? We're like, all right, we're going to build a snowman for the game. I mean, actually, the guys had, you know, they had to do the, the difficult... A uh, painful task of going to that same 4x4 park uh, in the in the snow <laughs> to drive it just because um, Andy absolutely needed to find out how the cars were, were handling on a combination of mud and snow. It was apparently very important. Yeah, it was very, very I'm, important. I'm not surprised. Did he did he kind of push for it hard? He, uh, I need to go. It needs to be right. I, absolutely, yeah. Um, but, and to be fair to him, came back with some pretty good reference and uh, it's, it's made for a pretty authentic experience inside that park. So. What else, um, like, what kind of else did you kind of get from the beast from the east to kind of put into, um, to put into Forza Horizon 4? I think the other thing is maybe, like, you remember how long that, that sort of lasted? Like, quite often in, the, in Britain, you get that thing where it snows and then very quickly melts away. But I think because we had that real harsh cold winter, everything froze and stuck mm -hmm. around for quite a long time. So, so we got to experience what that, you know, you got that slushy sort of look to, to the roads you get in, in, uh, in yeah. Britain when it starts to melt, which is totally fair. <coughs> but also when you get a real hard frost on tarmac, that's something that we don't necessarily see all that often, but we got to experience lots of it during that particular part of the year. And that's, um, that's something that we've you know, managed to replicate. You kind of get the kind of same slipperiness that kind of going at that speed as well, because where you have to kind of change your style of driving to kind of compensate for that kind of like ice and that slush. Absolutely, and there's, there's some other like specific things going on, which I know the car handling guys we got really, really into and, and made quite a few observations around which they weren't expecting, which is just the the sudden shocking drop in temperature on the tyres mm. when you hit a snowy surface. Did some really um, unexpected things to the way the cars were handling inside the physics model. Um, which gives you this whole new sort of layer of depth to the driving experience in winter in certain areas of the map. Yeah, we, and also because, like Ralph, we, you you've, you said it straight from the offset at the start of these streams that winter was your favourite season, right? What is it that makes like winter your favourite? So I th I think for me the the biggest thing is I think it's incredibly powerful when a game can change the way it looks completely. Hmm. You know, like I you know I, I'm sure I'm I'm not alone in you know. Loving games, playing games a lot, and then when you do, when you when you absolutely love a game, when you play it a lot, 
um, you get you get super familiar with it. You, you you totally understand every inch of you know that the world that, that you're, you're playing in. Um, and what this game, and in particular Winter within this game, does is on a really regular basis completely change the way the world looks. So that when you return to it, you know, sure, it's the same world that you've been playing in. It's the same roads that you know. Um, but it looks so completely different that it's almost kind of like just refreshing. Yeah, like I, I always throw back to the, playing the E3 demo um, when you kind of went through that that kind of like demo track and you were actually going down the same road, mm. but no one really noticed because it was so drastically different, yeah. um, which is kind of going to be amazing. We saw the map, the map as well, which is uh, you guys have actually shared on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, and if, yeah. if anyone wants to go check that out, um, go to Instagram or Twitter at Forza Motorsport on Twitter or at Forza Motorsport Official on Instagram and you can check out the map in winter because it looks so different, Completely just the map yeah. um, and, and, from what we saw last and week. And to jump on your point about it, you know, looking super different you didn't recognise. I think that's actually true for a bunch of the guys on the development team as well. You know, the, the first time we, we did that, that route and started working on it, people were surprised when they heard that that was the same stretch of road we were using, which was kind of validation for us that it really did feel and, and look like a very different experience. And there's the white space again as yeah. well, which, yeah. is, which is always nice to see. Uh, but we've got a few, we can get in a couple last questions, guys. So if you've got any last questions, this is your chance to get them in, get them answered by Ralph and Ben uh, as we kind of come up to the end. Because what do we have on next week as well? Because next week is the final season. It's the final season. It's the final show. What will we do with Tuesday nights after that? Um, <laughs> we are, we've, we've built up quite a debt, haven't we? We've promised that we will show Edinburgh, so we will. We've promised that we'll show competitive team racing, so we will. Um, I can't remember if we promised any other things, but we almost in inevitably This have. is the moment where I kind of need to just try and get you to promise more things because then it's just well, like so we can then get more things next um, week. So yeah, I know, I know obviously uh, it goes without saying spring. We will be showing spring. Um, I think we'll, we'll probably uh, we'll probably drop the spring map in the same way we have the winter map on social media this uh, next week as well. So there's a ton of stuff um, coming up in our final show next week. Well, we also have a poll. What is the fake? Wait, hold on. I want to see this poll that's going on. What's your favorite? So, guys, we have a poll that's going on right now. What is the favorite season of Forza Horizon 4 that you've seen so huh. far? So, you've seen summer, you've seen autumn, and you've seen winter, right? So, get involved. Let us know what you think. Which is your favorite? Do you kind of agree with Ralph that winter's your favorite? Because, um, like, for, for me, I, I really enjoyed summer just because I really like those high speed races and kind of going along the motorway. Um, I thought it was awesome. Uh, and also, I think Ben really enjoyed autumn last week. Cause of, you I know, do love you, autumn, yeah, yeah. You so know, all the trees. Yeah, I yeah, love, it's love so it. golden and romantic. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it is the one. Uh, but we're coming up to the end of the stream today, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed everything. Um, this has been winter. So many awesome new features to have. A, we've taken a look at. Um, so I think we should just talk about next week as well. Just, just a little next week. We've got spring next week. We're doing spring. We're doing Edinburgh. We're doing some uh, competitive team adventure, which is our competitive online uh, uh, mode. Uh, and probably some other things as well. Yeah, so make sure to follow the channel wherever you're watching, whether you're watching on Mixer, Twitch, Twitter, whichever platform you're watching on, make sure to follow so you don't